We've all seen those demonic images in films before, the inhuman growling, the twisted and pained expressions, the violent spastic seizures that are caricatures of normal human motion, that otherworldly ugliness, and yet, despite it all, they keep putting Christian Bale in movies. But we're not going to be talking about him in this bit. Instead, we're going to be talking about exorcism in a segment that we call How How Bullshit bullshit is is It? So, Heath, tell us, what is exorcism? Torturing the mentally ill with near impunity. I see. Approximately what that is. And what would somebody pretending to be objective say it is? Well, the dictionary defines exorcism as the attempt to free a person or place of evil spirits or malignant influences through the use of a religious or solemn ceremony. Uh And to be fair, exorcism is the attempt, at least, to do exactly that. Gotcha. Okay. The torturing mentally ill people is just a negligent side effect. Okay, now wait a minute. Are are you suggesting that all the people who think that they're possessed by demons are mentally ill? Are you suggesting there's a way to think you're possessed by demons without being mentally ill? Okay, fair point. But, I mean, if we're making an effort to be objective, we should see that it's at least possible that you actually could be possessed by demons, right? Except that mental illness can be shown to exist. Okay, yeah, I guess there's there's that, yeah. Now, I'm sure some of the people who seek exorcisms probably don't have a pre-existing mental disorder. They might just be getting stupid advice from their religious community. But the only thing that keeps possessed by demons from fitting the DSM-5's definition of mental disorder is the fact that Part 4 of the definition specifically exempts it. Okay. So, all right, so a probably mentally ill person gets it in their head they've been possessed by a demon. So what happens next? Well, you know, you contact your church or your shaman or whatever, and they'll probably come around to give you a once-over and see if you're actually possessed or if you're just, you know, symptoms. Okay, so what kind of metrics might an exorcist use to determine if somebody's possessed? Well, unlike people who aren't full of shit, they don't bother confirming that the thing they're manipulating even exists before they start using it in lieu of medical treatment on human subjects. So, basically, everybody who says, I have demon in me, gets an exorcism, and very often a bill. Sounds ethical, I guess. So once an exorcist determines by assumption that somebody is possessed, what are they likely to do? Well, there's a number of different methods, but the most common is a variation of a traditional Catholic practice. Okay, so how does that one go? Uh, Basically, a bunch of old men in dresses yell Bible verses at you while sprinkling water around like some kind of impotent geriatric bukkake video. It's Uh, it's kind of awesome if you're into that. It's weird otherwise. (laughs) So now... How do the subjects of exorcism typically respond? Uh, That depends on which exorcism movies they've seen recently. I'm not sure I follow. Well, the typical reactions of people who are possessed vary widely by culture and by most popular recent movie about exorcism. And interestingly enough, this is a trait that exorcism shares with none of the real things. Huh. All right, so the priest is then, I guess, battling imaginary monsters with his water pistol and his Bronze Age poetry, the patient or victim or whatever is making their best Linda Blair face while they yell demonic shit in the Batman voice. How likely is this process likely to go on? Well, that varies widely. Some exorcism procedures go on for days, while others can be carried out in like a half an hour over Skype. So, okay. So what accounts for the extreme variation there? The fact that it's complete bullshit and nothing is actually happening. Oh, so, all right. Okay. A lot of different lengths. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jesus cast out demons, didn't he? I could have swore I read that four times in a row somewhere. Uh, yes. Either Christianity and exorcism are both real or they're both not. Those are the available options here. All right. About that. I like where we're getting here then. Okay. So where does the practice of exorcism come from? Well, there are a few things you'll find that are more terrifying and heart-wrenching than the historical treatment of the mentally ill. Schizophrenia was first diagnosed as a mental disorder in 1887, but it's been with us since the beginning. The tendency of seemingly normal people to occasionally go complete batshit was a tough one on humanity, and we did a lot of sadistic shit to those people along the way before we figured out the right way to treat things like that. Okay, so exorcism is like a a historic vestige of pre-scientific psychiatric treatment? Uh, Yeah, exactly. And, And honestly, back when the alternative was waterboarding you or sticking ice picks through your eye sockets or whatever they're doing is probably one of the most effective options. So Okay, but that. then why has exorcism outlived all the other weird shit that we used to do? Because it's extremely heavily tied to religion. Well, and sure, but it, it, so is slaughtering bulls and splashing their blood against the altar and owning the slaves, but we largely got over that. Right, and for similar reasons, exorcism has largely been driven underground in today's culture. It's not particularly common in America, 
But in areas with less access to education, it's still a frighteningly prevalent alternative to proper psychiatric treatment. Okay, so how common is it here? Well, public interest in exorcism usually follows a cycle. Interest rises in a culture until mentally ill people start dying of torture, at which time public interest starts to slowly wane. At the moment, the popularity of exorcism is on the rise, largely thanks to numerous public endorsements from people like gay atheist Pope. So is this strictly a religious phenomenon? Well, if you're willing to pay for it, secular people will take your money too. There's people that dub themselves entity release therapists, and they pretend they're doing scientific demon wrestling. Oh, I you, see. You can buy that too, yes. <laughs> All right, so now it strikes me right away that tying up crazy people and throwing water at them isn't going to really be good for their mental health. That's correct. So how dangerous is this exactly? Incredibly dangerous. I mean, with the exception of physical abuse, there's not much that you can do to a delusional person it's going to harm them more than playing along with their delusions. Mm -hmm. And of course, since exorcism often involves physical abuse, it's a combination of the two worst things you can do. Wow. Much. And Ouch. because it's a religious ceremony, it's essentially completely unregulated, and there are no generally accepted ethical standards of practice, and obviously no scientific ones because it doesn't exist. Okay, so worst case scenario, what happens to the subject? Uh, they die a horrible, painful death while being tortured by... Misguided people that love them. Does Great. that actually happen? 1995, San Francisco, California. Pentecostal ministers pummel a woman to death in an effort to drive out her demons. All right. Real headline. That's, that's horrible, obviously, but that's an isolated incident. 1997, Glendale, California. Another woman is stomped to death by two priests during an exorcism. Okay, two isolated incidents. Also in 1997, New York, New York. Five-year-old girl killed by being force-fed poison and having her mouth taped shut in accordance with an exorcism ritual. Oh, fuck. 1998, Sayville, New York. A 17-year-old girl is suffocated by a plastic bag by her mother in an attempt to destroy the demon that lived within her. Okay, okay, I get it. I don't... There's more. Not even to this millennium yet. Well, I'm sure there's plenty. I, 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 that's more than I ever want to hear. So how the fuck is it that this isn't illegal? That would be religion. Fuck. Yeah, well, what makes exorcism so much more dangerous than most of the shit we talk about on this segment is just how many people are willing to play along with this shit. In addition to the Pope's well-known support for the Drive Out Satan School of Psychiatry, a number of mainstream news stations have run uncritical pieces on the practice of exorcism without bothering to remind their audience that all the psychological torture stuff is for entertainment purposes only and why Still would wouldn't be very safe if anyone propagate this stuff? Uh, again, religion. Fuck. Yep. So I Fuck. guess there's nothing left to ask about exorcism except how, how bullshit, bullshit is it? <laughs> um, all right. You remember the scene from Dogma where the shit demon showed up uh -huh. trying to kill them? The Golagothan, of course. <laughs> it, it's like that thing with really bad Taco Bell squirts. I got gotcha. you. Sounds like some raunchy shit. Well, Heath, thanks so much for once more lending us your fecality expertise. <laughs> Anytime.